This series was based on two books by Colin Dan, In the Path of the Storm and Battle for the Park. However, unlike the second series, it does not pick up exactly where the previous series left off. In between series, Kestrel has presumably left the park, or possibly died. Her absence is never explained. Leverett and his mate have had a daughter named Dash, and Whisper has had a cub named Plucky. It's odd that she only had one cub in this series, when she clearly mentioned cubs at the end of series two. I guess the rest died or left the park at some point. All of the blue foxes have left the park, except Ranger, who has stayed with Charmer. This series also has a much more cartoonish look, with brighter colours, and the animals doing more human-like physical actions, such as folding their arms. Plot. The first episode is called Comings and Goings. The Great White Stag is killed when he drinks from the stream, as it has been poisoned. Whistler sees this and goes to tell Fox. On the way, he meets Shadow, who has come to live in White Deer Park, and a male badger named Herkel. Meanwhile, a group of four rats, led by a white rat named Bully, arrive in the park and reveal that they are planning to take over White Deer Park. Plucky and Dash, who are best friends, have a race together. Plucky is leading for most of the race, but Weasel gets in the way at the finish and Dash wins. Plucky is annoyed at Weasel. Weasel mentions that she would have expected to get more sympathy given her condition, revealing that she is pregnant. Whistler tells everyone that the Great White Stag is dead, and the animals worry who is going to take his place as leader, as the most likely candidate is a bad-tempered stag named Trey. Weasel also torments Owl about the fact she does not have a mate, and Owl decides to leave the park in search of one. Meanwhile, Mossy is captured by the rats, but Measley scares them away. For some reason, the rats are particularly scared of Weasels. Later, Weasel and Measley meet Trey, who tells them he won't let them make noise in his park. So Weasel decides to leave the park, planning never to return, and Measley follows, much to her annoyance. A male snake named Sinuous arrives in the park and becomes Adder's mate. With the Weasels gone, the rats begin to make their plans to take over the park. In the second episode, called Out and About, we've moved on a few months. Trey begins telling most of the Farthingwood animals that they don't belong here, and that only deer should live in the park. The other animals agree that Trey is nuts. Meanwhile, Al takes shelter in the town they pass through on their way to White Deer Park. She speaks to one of the bats in the church about how she is looking for a mate. She finds her a moth-eaten looking rook, as it is a bird of some sort, but Al isn't interested in him. The weasels have been living on a farm for the last few months. Weasel has had her young, a male named Fido, and a female named Cleo. She tries to get Measley to teach them how to be weasels, and steal some eggs from the chickens in the farm, but he gets caught by the farmer. Later, the farm animals call a meeting and ask them to leave. The weasels reluctantly agree and set off in search of a new home. In episode 3, Water Water, Trey tells Plucky not to drink from the pond as it is for deer only, but Plucky tells him that he drinks where he wants. The weasels find a barn to shelter from the rain, however the donkey in the barn tells them to clear off. Measley suggests that they get rid of the mice in the barn in exchange for being allowed to stay in the barn. Back at the park, Herkel and Shadow come to drink from the stream, but then Herkel notices a rabbit that has drunk from the stream drops dead and realises that the water is poisoned. He tries to warn Shadow, but not before she has already drunk from the stream. They go to the pond and try to wash away the poison, but Trey catches them and he knocks her into the pond. In the morning, the donkey tells the weasels to leave the barn again, and he gets mad and starts kicking the walls of the barn, until it is completely destroyed. Damn, that's a pretty fragile barn. The weasels somehow survive the barn collapsing on them, and set off once again to find somewhere else to live. Shadow rests in an empty earth, and Herkel warns Fox and Vixen about the stream. Eventually, Shadow recovers from the poison. In episode 4, The Missing Fox's Friend, Lucky has disappeared, and the number of rats in the park continues to grow. Al comes across a copse with a family of rooks in it, one of which is the moth-eaten looking rook she met in the church. He tells Al he loves her, but Al is disgusted by him. Dash goes around the park, asking if anyone has seen Plucky, and finds that many other animals have also gone missing. 
she eventually comes across a lorry that appears to have a fox in a cage in the back of it. So she chases after it and sees it go through a large pair of spiked top gates with high walls. I guess Plucky is on the inside now. The weasels have found a new home on a farm. They come across Rollo from the previous series, who is now a sheepdog, and Weasel suggests that he become their weasel dog, protecting them and looking after Fido and Cleo. Dash tells Fox about the lorry. The two of them go to watch more animals in cages being put into the back of it, and Fox notices that one of the men is the warden. Fox asks Whistler to fly over the high-walled area and see what's inside. Rollo's first task as a weasel dog is to bring them food. He brings them part of the farmer's dinner as well as some of his own food. He also tells them that a badger is looking for animals from White Deer Park. Rollo feels that they must leave the farm immediately, otherwise they will be found and have to go back to the park. In episode 5, Shrifts and Tempers, Trey continues to be a menace to the other animals. The weasels come across an empty earth and it turns out to be the home of a sinister wildcat. It corners them in the back of the earth, but then Rollo shows up and saves them. Bully's right hand, Spike, meanwhile, has become a spy for the rats by pretending that he is on the other animal's side. Friendly, Charmer, Ranger and Whisper attack and kill some of the rats in their headquarters, but Bully tells them that there are more and more coming all the time and that there are too many of them to kill. The Rook continues to follow Owl around as she searches for a mate. He tells her that he still loves her. Owl tries to tell him that they can't be mates as he is not an owl, but he won't listen. Owl also discovers that she has returned to Farthing Wood, where a number of houses have been built and only one tree remains. In the sixth episode, Adventure for the Birds, Dash is starting to miss Plucky, so she decides to allow herself to be captured by the humans in the hope that she will take them to the same place as Plucky. Owl tries to get rid of the rook by flying into a house, but becomes trapped inside when the window is knocked shut. The Rook tries to get her out by flying at the window, and she also meets a cat that lives in the house, who confirms that this is indeed the former site of Farthing Wood. Whistler flies over the high-walled area and finds Plucky inside, who tells him that this is another animal sanctuary and that he is happy living here, but he does also plan to escape as he misses Dash. Owl escapes the house when a boy comes into the room to play, and she flies out the door, down the stairs, and out some French windows. She finds the rook recovering after crashing into the window several times. His mate says that she will look after him, and Owl thanks him for helping. In episode 7, The Long-Tailed Visitor, Fox organises an attack on the rat's headquarters. They kill quite a few, but Fox quickly realises that there are just too many of them, and more continue to come all the time. A young male owl comes across Owl in the middle of the day, while she is sleeping, and the two hoot together for a while. Fido and Cleo take Rollo's dog bowl into a small stream where they row down it, but then they get swept away by the rapids. With a branch conveniently hanging over the edge, Measley hangs underneath and tries to grab them, but a wild cat shows up and tries to attack them. Rollo, however, grabs her tail and the two are swept away downriver. Fido and Cleo, meanwhile, are saved by a pair of terrapins, and they mourn the loss of Rollo, who they assume has drowned. But in fact, he has been saved by the farmer, who is angry at him for taking his dinner. In the eighth episode, Scared Silly by Snakes, Adder and Sinuous attack the rat's headquarters. They reach Bully's nest, but he escapes when they are forced to flee when hundreds of rats ambush them. Meanwhile, Plucky is able to escape the walled area by jumping into the back of the truck as it passes through the gates. Owl is becoming better acquainted with the male owl, who is named Hollow. He mentions a young female owl he knows, who he plans to make his mate in the future. He also tells her that she is too old for him. Owl is understandably upset, but after he leaves, she becomes suspicious that he has made the young owl up. She follows him, but becomes covered in cement when she hides in a cement mixer. She is somehow able to fly back to the tree where Hollow finds her, now with the cement dried. He tells her that he did indeed make the young owl up, although he doesn't explain why he made her up. He also tells Owl that he loves her, which makes Owl happier than she has ever been. Kind of ironic given her situation. Fido and Cleo are angry at Weasel for losing Rollo and they storm off. They meet a piglet who calls himself I'll Never Be Sausages but that's a stupid name, so I'm just going to call him The Piglet. He tells them his parents have been made into sausages, but that he has escaped when the truck he was on crashed. 
Fido and Cleo ask Weasel if they can keep him as a replacement for Rollo. She reluctantly agrees. In the ninth episode, A Bigger Oink, Hollow continues to mourn the fact that Owl is trapped in cement, but says that he still loves her. Meanwhile, Fox has decided to make the warden aware of the rat problem in the park by dropping some dead rats outside his house. Weasel and Measley are starting to become rather annoyed by the piglet. Nice to see them getting a taste of their own medicine. The warden finds the rat headquarters and kills a few rats. Ada suggests to Sinuous that they go and kill some rats as well, but he says he's too tired and she leaves in a huff. Weasels and the piglet have taken shelter in another empty earth, which turns out to belong to a wild boar. Weasel suggests to the boar that he adopt the piglet as he is an orphan. He agrees after some clever flattering from Weasel. The rats come across Sinuous asleep and mistake him for Adder. They kill him, thinking that the other animals will lose heart as a result of his death. The episode ends with Adder and the Badgers mourning his death in one of the few truly sad moments of the series. In the tenth episode, The Mole Game, Toad and Spike play a game guessing where Mossy will come up. Adder has now become obsessed with killing rats as revenge for killing her mate. I guess the rats kind of shot themselves in the foot there. The warden puts poison down the rat hole, but one rat eats all of it. Owl is starting to feel rather depressed, trapped inside cement, and suggests that Hollow just take another mate. But Hollow says he loves her too much. He and some other birds knock her off the branch and try to get the cement to break, but it doesn't work. The rats capture Toad, but Dash saves him by getting some deer to stampede at them. The boar is having a lot of trouble disciplining the piglet, and he tells the weasels that they must leave if he is to bring him up properly. The eleventh episode is called The Worst Kind of Hurricane. Mossy tells everyone that there is going to be a hurricane, but since he doesn't bother to say how he knows this, no one believes him. Amazingly, he turns out to be right. The hurricane pulls down the Farthingwood tree on top of Al. Somehow it doesn't kill her, but it does free her from her cement prison. The weasels shelter in a tree, while the Farthingwood animals shelter in Fox's earth. Shadow, for some mad reason, decides to go out in the hurricane to check on Hercule. Once the hurricane is over, Owl insists to Hollow that they return to White Deer Park, but finds that she is very weak, having spent a long time imprisoned in cement. The boar has lost everything, including his wife, in the hurricane, but he finds consolation in the piglet. The two of them bid farewell to the weasels and head up country. Measley suggests to Weasel that they go back to White Deer Park for about the fifth time, and this time Weasel agrees. The warden finds Shadow unconscious under a tree. Trey is also trapped under a tree, but he is conscious and very angry. Most of the animals seem happy about this, but Fox and a stag named Laird both try to save him. Laird rams the tree out of the way, and Trey limps away very weak. In the penultimate episode, Homeward Bound, Owl insists that she is strong enough to fly back to White Deer Park. She tries to prove this by giving a big hoot after a long flight, and Hollow seems convinced. On the way back, they meet the moth-eaten Rook, who says that his wife was killed in the hurricane, and that he is now acting as mother and father to an orphaned baby Rook. Owl wishes him luck, and says that she will never forget him. The farthing wood animals are thrilled when the weasels return to White Deer Park. Fox explains to them about the rats, but Weasel tells him that they are not going to fight his battles for him. Measley, however, stands up to Weasel, and insists that they help. They begin by teaching Fido and Cleo how to deal with rats. Mossy finds Shadow at the Warden's house. He, Herco and the Weasels go to rescue her. The cat tries to stop them by sending Rollo out, but he is too scared to do anything. Fido and Cleo are overjoyed to see Rollo is alive, and Shadow escapes. Laird becomes the new leader of the deer, and the farthing wood animals are happy, as he seems like a much fairer stag than Trey. He also seems to have much more of a personality than the Great White Stag. In fact, most of the deer in this series seem to have much more of a personality than the Great White Stag. In the last ever episode, Bully Bully Bully, Owl and Hollow return to the park to see the rats planning a final battle. She goes to tell Fox, who is happy to see that she is back. Weasel apologises for what she said about her not having a mate, and Owl introduces them all to Hollow. The rats began to mount a massive attack on the animals. They fight for a bit with quite a few rats being killed in either hand-to-hand combat or as a result of being stampeded by the stags. Bully somehow survives this fight and tells Spike that he hates him now since he appears to have changed sides dancing with wolves style. It seems though that there are still many rats alive and Bully has not given up. 
But then, Cleo bites off his tail, and everyone laughs at him. This, for some reason, convinces him to leave. Spike stays, however, as he is now friends with the Farthingwood animals. Fox steps down as Farthingwood leader, and makes Plucky the new leader. Dre shows up and tells them that the walled area where Plucky was taken has now been combined with White Deer Park to make one big park. Now less bad-tempered, Dre and Fox go to explore. Meanwhile, Plucky's first order as leader is for them to go down to the pond for a drink. Now let's talk about some of the new characters in this series. The rats. These guys actually worked better than the blue foxes from the previous series as an intimidating large mass enemy. They are shown as a constant presence throughout the series, and while they come across as rather dumb and cowardly as individuals, they did scare you when you saw them in large groups. The problem comes when you get to know the individual characters. They are mostly just comic relief characters who don't really seem to have a particularly good idea of what they're doing. Bully. While Scarface scared me as a kid, this guy just kind of annoys the living fuck out of me. I never understood why the rats followed him. What did he do that made him a good leader, other than just simply yell out, Who am I? Which, by the way, gets old really quickly. By about the fourth episode, I wanted to throw something at the TV every time he asked the rats to remind him of his own name. What was the idea behind it? Is he leader just because of his name? I was also really disappointed that he didn't die at the end of the series. Herkel. This character is obviously brought in to replace Badger. He even has Mossy ride around in his head in a similar fashion to the way Mole did in the first series. Unfortunately, that's where the similarities end. Herkel possesses no personality whatsoever, outside of the fact that he has this weird obsession with being kind. Much like the rats, he seems mostly to be in there for comic relief, and really adds nothing to any element of the plot other than the odd line here and there. I think Shadow summed him up quite well when she remarks, You do say such silly things. Trey. His subplot actually interested me much more than the main plot involving the rats, so it's a shame that he's rather downplayed throughout most of the series. All we really get is this early establishment of him being a bully who just wants to use his power to push people around, purely for the sake of pushing them around, and then he barely appears until near the end of the series when we get this sort of resolution to his character when he and the other animals help him out despite what he has done. I liked the fact that his character was rehabilitated rather than him getting some kind of comeuppance. But otherwise, he seems like a rather generic jerk character to me. Plucky. He sort of took the place of Fox for the most part during this series, as the brave hero who tried to do whatever he could to help. He was one of the few characters in this series I really liked, so I kind of wish they had focused on him a bit more. Also, since his mother is in this series, I don't know why they didn't focus more on their relationship with one another. I would have been interested to know how Plucky felt about his father's death, since his mother is actually partly responsible for it. It's mentioned once that Plucky knows Bold was his father, and that he is now dead, but not that he knows the circumstances. I guess the writers didn't want events from the previous series to play too big a role. Dash. Plucky's best friend, and another character I wish they had focused on a bit more. She seemed like much less sure of herself than Plucky. Ironically, though, she seems like the more dominant one in their relationship with one another, always winning the races they have, and always insisting that she is fastest. Things got a little too soppy in the scene where they were reunited, after Plucky had been taken away, but otherwise I liked their relationship. It's funny how the interspecies relationships seem to be the best ones on this show. Sinuous, the only one of the main characters who wasn't a villain to die during this series. There was a real lack of any real emotion, as far as I was concerned, when it came to his death, and I think that's really a testament to how I had far less of a connection with him than I'd had with, say, Badger or Bolt. There was never any point in this series where we really got to know him outside of the fact that he was Adder's mate. If it had been Adder who was killed, then it might have been different. We could have seen him come into his own after Adder's death as an attempt to avenge her death. As it is, he was really just a side character, killed off before we even really knew him. Spike. He was probably the only rat other than Bully to be properly developed during this series. He goes through an interesting change when he becomes spy for the rats, 
and ultimately changes sides. The change comes towards the end of the series when Toad is captured by the rats, but he suddenly realises that he now cares more for Toad than he does the rats. The problem with this subplot is the fact that we don't really learn enough about him or his relationship with the other rats prior to him becoming Spy. So whatever change he goes through doesn't really have any kind of significance behind it. Fido and Cleo I find it a bit odd that Weasel and Measley had kids together. I mean, I know they seemed to get along okay in the previous series as friends, but I would never have pictured them doing, you know, together. But I guess it is a kid's show, so you should probably overlook things like that. Anyway, two more weasels only makes the ordeal of watching them all the more annoying. They do both stand up to their parents at some points during the series, but they aren't really better characters than their parents. They blame Weasel for the loss of Rollo when it wasn't really her fault at all, and in fact it was more their fault for going out on the river in the first place. Two Weasels in the second series did work for me, but as they say, three's a crowd, or in this case, four. Hollow. Hollow was part of the only subplot in this series that really genuinely interested me, so it was a bit disappointing for me that he wasn't introduced until the seventh episode. His relationship with Al isn't really very well developed until after he admits he's in love with her. So their relationship and their reasons for loving each other is rather weak. It really felt to me at this point that Al would settle for anyone, and Hollow seemed much the same. When he confesses his love, however, we see much more loyalty from him by doing everything he can to try and free her from the cement. It would have been interesting to see more of them interacting after they returned to White Deer Park, and Hollow interacting with the other animals. This subplot had potential to lead to something better, but for what we got it was okay. But I never understood why he kept saying what randomly in the middle of sentences. Moth-eaten Rook He has an interesting relationship with Owl during the first half of this series. He follows Owl around, telling her that he is in love with her, despite her not being interested in him at all. But over time, Owl grows to care for him. While not very bright, he does do what he can to try and help Owl on a couple of occasions. But I didn't really understand why his mate was okay with him going off after other birds. In fact, by giving him a mate, his behaviour really doesn't make much sense. Why is he going after Owl if he already has a mate? How did he get a rook to be his mate if he's only interested in owls? And what does his mate see in him that makes her want to be his mate? Conclusion The main thing in this series that sticks out like a sore thumb when compared to the other two is the fact that there is much more of a focus on comedy. Now, that is always a risk when it comes to things that are not known for their comedy. It worked in Star Trek IV because it was genuinely funny. It doesn't work here because the jokes just weren't funny. I can only recall one, maybe two times during the entire series when I laughed out loud. And most of the time it was just annoying. In fact, annoying sums up this series quite well for me. Or, more precisely, annoying characters. The piglets that wouldn't stop squealing. The baby rook that kept yelling, worm. Herkel's obsession with being kind. And Bully's constant cries of, who am I? There are a lot of recurring gags that I didn't care for, such as Weasel telling Measley, this is all your fault, when it clearly wasn't. There is also far less of a focus on characters from the previous series. None of the hares from the previous series appear. The rabbits barely appear. There are no blue foxes aside from Ranger. Kestrel is missing. Friendly Whisper and Vixen are all extremely downplayed. And the weasels and owl are away from the park for most of the series, so they didn't interact with the other animals from the park too much. Fox, Toad, Ranger and Charmer are really the only characters in this series that I felt were playing familiar roles. And as a result, there really doesn't seem to be nearly as much of a wide community of animals in this series. With two of the four plots taking place outside of the park, things seem to jump around a bit too much. It also felt like the series was taking on too much, I mean, there were only 13 episodes of just over 20 minutes, and yet you have four separate subplots. Trey, the rats, the weasel's search for a home, and owl's search for a mate. Also, having one of them focus solely on the weasels really wasn't a good idea, if you ask me. The subplot about Trey seemed a bit poorly structured. 
It seemed to get a decent amount of attention during the first three or four episodes, but after that they pretty much just forgot about it until the last two. But this is only the tip of the iceberg of how badly the plot is structured in this series. Plot points come and go without any real meaning or reason. Why does Whistler complain at one point about being too old to fly around? It never led to anything and it was never mentioned again. Characters come and go without making much of an impact other than just to be annoying, such as the bats in the bell tower. I felt like the scene with Plucky and Dash being reunited went a bit too far on the emotions, especially when it wasn't even the ending of an episode. Then you have unexplained plot devices. Like, what was the point of having Owl return to Farthing Wood? Was it just for the novelty of seeing Farthing Wood again? How did Mossy know there would be a hurricane? We also have many scenes that don't go anywhere. At the start of one episode, Adder and Sinuous plan to attack the Rat's headquarters, and they actually spend more time arguing about who should be in charge of the attack than they do actually doing the attacking. And when they do attack, it does absolutely nothing. They don't kill a single rat. Half the time, it really felt like they were just trying to kill time. There are less deaths in this series as well. Sinuous is the only non-villain to die on screen in this series. And they actually tried to make a big deal out of the wild boar's death, when we didn't actually see her on screen once. Now, you might be thinking, what's wrong with not having many deaths? Well, the problem is, it isn't as realistic as the other two series were. In reality, most of these animals would have died by this point. Not to mention, why is Bully still alive at the end of this series? With all the rats that are killed during this series, is there any good reason not to kill Bully as well? Aside from anything else, how hard would it have been? At least with Scarface, you could understand the threat he poised, but on his own, Bully is no more intimidating or tough than any of the other rats. Cut off the head and the body will die, I say. Just kill Bully and put an end to it. But no, instead they bite off his tail and laugh at him. Like, that's the legitimate reason to leave. So, you might be thinking, is there anything in this series that I liked? Well, actually, yes. The animation is much better, and it's actually quite nice to look at. I liked seeing Weasel and Measley start a family together, and Al finally finding a mate was very satisfying. I liked the irony of Al becoming trapped in cement actually coinciding with the happiest moment of her life, as it inspired Hollow to confess his love for her. It was nice seeing Rollo finally do something right, and be loved in return for it. And like I said, I did actually laugh a few times during this series. But for the most part, this series sucked. It's not just a case of it not being up to the standards of the other two. Even when you look at this series on its own, it sucks. The subplot where Al goes looking for a mate is really the only thing that is worth seeing in this series. Well, I hope you enjoyed my retrospective of The Animals of Farthing Wood. Despite the last series, it's still a great show, and it still holds up to this day. See you.